the B-1B Lancer. The men call it the bone. The B-1B bomber is 146 feet long, weighs approximately 440,000 pounds fully loaded, and can reach supersonic speeds of Mach 1.2. The four General Electric turbofan engines produce 30,000 pounds of thrust each, meaning the B-1 is powered by the equivalent of three F-35 fighter engines. Its three massive bomb bays carry a flexible arsenal. This includes smart weapons, bombs and guided missiles that use global positioning data to precisely destroy targets. Over the Middle East, the crews often deploy guided bombs, called JDAMs. Standing behind me here is the 180-inch rotary launcher, which is carrying the 2,000-pound joint direct attack munition. And each bomber holds three per bay, which is a total of 24 GPS guided munitions. A single B-1B carries a weapons payload eight times heavier than that carried by a B-17 during World War II. And like fast food customers, the Bones weapons officers can have it their way. Uh, it can be almost like a Burger King. You know, I'll take a 500 pounder with an instantaneous fuse. Please give me a 20, a 2,000 pounder with a 25 millisecond fuse. And, and while you're at it, you know, can you send me a burger and fries? The B-1B continues to share mission duties with a relic of the Cold War, the B-52 bomber. They both carry a weapons payload in excess of 25 tons. But that's where the similarities end. I like to describe them like cars. Your B-52 is like your grandfather's pickup truck. It's old, it's reliable, and it carries just about anything you can imagine to carry. The, uh, the B-1 uh, is the muscle car of the bomber force. It has power, it has speed, and it has a huge payload capability. The B-1B can trace its muscle car beginnings to the early 1970s. The Air Force wanted to replace its aging B-52s with supersonic bombers that could quickly penetrate Soviet airspace with their nuclear arsenal. But since many politicians believed America's intercontinental ballistic missile program was a sufficient deterrent to the Soviets, they were convinced the proposed B-1A bomber was a colossal waste of money. So the Air Force basically found itself in a very difficult position trying to sell this new heavy bomber, and I might mention very expensive heavy bomber, to Congress. But over a period of time they did succeed. The B-1A bomber prototypes could fly at Mach 2.2. But even at twice the speed of sound, they couldn't outrun numerous mechanical problems and cost overruns. And so the Carter administration, looking around to make cuts, he decided to cut back on the B-1A. And so the B-1A went away. Now, what people recognize is that the B-1A was really too good to go away. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear. In 1981, when Ronald Reagan assumed the presidency, he immediately vowed to restore the punch to the U.S. military. That included reviving the B-1 program. Renamed the B-1B, a single bomber could deliver a payload of 24 B-61 nuclear bombs with a destructive capacity nearly 500 times that of the Hiroshima blast. But when the new bomber entered service in the late 1980s, it faced a sudden identity crisis. Well, as time has passed, and of course the Soviet threat has collapsed, you know, effectively the Air Force was faced with the dilemma, what do we do with the B-1 bomber? Since America no longer needed a long-range nuclear bomber, in the late 1990s, the Air Force began upgrading the B-1B to carry conventional weapons. Over the past decade, the retooled B-1B has become a workhorse of the U.S. bomber fleet. In six years of operations over Afghanistan and later in Iraq, B-1Bs have flown more than 2,200 sorties and dropped more than 7,400 bombs, 
far surpassing the B-52 and the B-2 stealth bombers. But the B-1B's greatest weapon may be its extreme agility, meaning the crews can sometimes avoid using bombs and still make a major impact on hostile forces below. They sometimes buzz the enemy by streaking at supersonic speeds as low as 200 feet off the ground. The sonic effect of the B-1B engines on the human ear is similar to a large conventional bomb blast. The key to this highly dangerous flight path is the bomber's autopilot. It employs a system called TF, or terrain following. When TF is engaged, the aircraft's radar scans forward up to 10 miles to create a map of the terrain. The plane uses the map to skim above the contours of the terrain without input from the pilot. Crews often use this low-level ground-hugging feature to awesome effect. Well, a show of force is really just to say, we're here, and a lot of times you can disperse the enemy or scare them into hiding and run them off before we have to use any kinetic tools, like a weapon. Collateral damage is very, very important to us, and we minimize that to the maximum extent. Whether it's a show force sortie or a tactical bomb strike, the B-1B pushes the limits of what a bomber can accomplish. Its capabilities make it extreme, the power makes it extreme, its flexibility makes it extreme. And if I were an enemy of the United States, the last thing I'd want to see is a B-1 coming at me.